always knew that I'll be in the business of writing on some levels. I thought initially it would be it would be in sports journalism. I thought that I would be an um, anchor on ESPN, and I thought that that would segue into a career writing uh, movies. And I knew at some point in my life I would be doing it. And um, I remember growing up, you know, I really didn't have the self-confidence. Um, I, I was often targeted by bullies because I was so quiet and shy. But, you know, I've always was a dreamer. And I always felt that, you know, dreams could, could come true for me. And I just had to walk the path. And the seeds was planted as far as confidence and my ability level as a writer was when I was in second grade. The first time I read my report card, she said, I write excellent stories. And I'm like, wow. Even at that age, I, I remember just yesterday the pride I felt reading that. You know, I was, I had all this, those self-esteem issues going on and I had a teacher who acknowledged me. And I think teachers are the most precious gift out there. They really are. Because they, they can change how we think as students. And, it can really, really impact our lives in a positive way. Uh, I remember when Nickelodeon first kicked off, and I used to watch the show called You Can't Do That on television, and Today's Special, and um, Live Wire. I remember watching that, going great. And I looked at it, I, I was like, I can do that. I can do that. I, I just felt, I said, I can do that. I feel it, I feel the writing style, I can, I can do this thing. I really can. And as a 10 year old, I'm thinking on those levels. I said, I thought it was the most fascinating thing. It's the most fascinating thing in the world, watching them do that stuff every weekend, week out. And um, I said, I can do that. <laughs> I think that experience of going airborne was, you know, God just saying, Cedric, look, you know, you spoke to me. I'm, I'm hearing you and answering you in, in a way that you didn't expect. But this time, I am going to let you be the judge, the juror, and the executioner of your pain. You're going to take control of this. And you don't need the clicks. You don't need the in crowd. Because when you're up there, 25, 3,000 feet up, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody, anybody can care less who you know. Or who you who you be with? Nobody even care. You got to execute. You got to perform, and you got to not get anybody killed. That's all anybody cares about. And God's saying, "I'm gonna let you prove you to yourself." So you have no doubt whatsoever. I put you there in the first place, and it's not you doing this. It's not about you. One of my most memorable moments, I I, I think. I, I have a picture of some kids. I took a picture of them when I was in Somalia, and you know they looked at us as heroes. And you know you're in your uniform. You just I'm just a country boy. I'm in Somalia. I'm tired, stained, hungry, beat up from being in the back of that truck, on <laughs> security all day, and scared. And then you get to these villages and stuff. They're looking at you like you're heroes, man. And it was just the most awesome feel just to be revered like that. And they respected you on that level where they wanted to know more about you. They're so curious, you know, me being African American and you get these cute little arguments with them. They'll look at you and be like, you Somali. I said, no, I'm not African American. No, you Somali. <laughs> but that was one of the funniest <laughs> experiences uh, ever. But. I look at those pictures of, you know, of course I can't remember all of them, but those, those pictures or that one picture, I mean, was a good example of the typical kid. And they're no different from the kids that, that's in the States. They got dreams and they want good for their families and everything. And I often wonder what happened to them. And I hope if they, they ever watch this video, I hope they understand that the impact they left on me is far greater than maybe the impact I think, I think I left on them. Because it taught me about being grateful for every drop of anything good in this life. 
because those people suck uh, out there, man, and it's unbelievable. And the, I mean, you you go in these villages, you see like bullet holes everywhere. I can imagine growing up as a child in that area, and under those circumstances with the pirates and stuff, uh, robbing um um what do they call it? Oh, humanitarian efforts. And when I see those kids and stuff, I wonder what became of them. And it taught me about what power is about. And power is responsibility. It really is. And, you know, it's, it's handed to you for a reason. And when you're given power, it's, it's about serving. And that's what that experience taught me. And, and granted, you know, I look at the picture and I just smile because I remember how I felt when they, they just come up to you, run to you, and you like rock stars to them. And I'm like, I'm just a kid in South Carolina. So that was the coolest thing I, I remember. Torrential Waters is a story about a young man who inherited uh, a special gift. Through some unlikely circumstances, he finds himself kind of in the public eye. This story started when I was maybe a junior in high school. It started off as a, as a play, and not me not knowing really what I'm doing as far as formatting and all that, but I had to core the story back then. Back then, it dealt with racism and a lot of other um, injustices and stuff, because yeah. that's what I was around, you know, um, you know, South Carolina, you see things. But as I grew as a man, and there's other aspects of the story, like the spiritual aspects of it, and the coming of age aspects of it. I, I saw the world differently. It deals with bullying, peer pressure, um, relationships that young, virtuous men, because there's a lot of virtuous men, young men out there that have been taught to do the right thing when it comes to relationships. And I tell that side of it, what young men who are trying to be virtuous, and I interview guys with us, that's what they're saying. Same things I've, I've seen things I've experienced. This is real stuff. And I combine all those elements in the story. And it's a hard hitting tale. Uh, it has some funny moments in it. And I'm just gonna be real with you. When I tell the story, I, I am gonna be in your head. I'm gonna tell you. I am going to tell you what you're thinking already as you're reading. That's, that's how I wrote that story. And I, I relish in that challenge, I challenge you just like it challenged me because this thing will open you up. There's times I've been in tears writing this stuff, man. This stuff will open you up. There are things in this story that I, that I didn't know I was going to write because it's, it's stuff start coming out of me, my own pain, my own anguish. But when they teach you in acting, that's what they tell you to draw from. And I'm part actor and that's what I was taught. In a way that you, you, you would enjoy the story and you're, you're captivated by this character called Vance Water. Uh, you're captivated by Baron and Deneva. You're, you're captivated by these characters. These are characters you, you will just get hooked into. I hook you in and you never let go.